Lord, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you that you have been so good to us, better than we have been to ourselves. And Lord, we ask that you come into this place today. Lord, as we come into one mind and in one accord. Lord, that we push everything out of our hearts and our minds except you. Lord, that we focus, laser focused on you. Because God, you are the one who can change our lives. You are the one who can change our circumstance. Lord, I ask that you cover the word of this, the seed of the word this morning, Lord. And Lord, that it be deeply rooted into our hearts and our minds, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you place your protecting angels around us, that the enemy cannot uproot it, it cannot destroy it. But God, you would water it, you would open our hearts and minds this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It's ironic that my family is here. It is an honor. Because just the other day when we went camping, I was watching the, the leaves fall from the trees. And as I was watching the leaves fall from the trees, I could not help but think of years ago when I was running through the woods at my Aunt Eva's house on Thanksgiving. And how we did not have a care in the world. All we wanted to do was play and get dirty and eat and get dirty and eat again. But God is good, amen? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, and in verse 17. It says, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And when he was sad at that saying, he went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered <coughs> again and saith unto him, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Now here, the rich young ruler was rich in earthly possessions. And we think, well, if it's if we have money, if we are rich, how can we make it into heaven? Jesus was not necessarily talking about riches in earthly money, although that falls into the category. Do you know that our riches could be our family? Our riches could be our jobs? Our riches could be anything that replaces the Heavenly Father. Riches could be anything that take the place of our Heavenly Father. It could be addiction. It could be money. It could be food. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be all these different things. Have the children went to the back yet? The children may be dismissed, I'm sorry.
God wants us to prosper. The reason I know that is because 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Even while your soul is prospering, he wants you to prosper. Both physically, financially, spiritually, and mentally. He wants you to be in good health. He wants you to, to prosper. He just does not want those things to have you. This rich young ruler, it said he was grieved when Jesus said, yeah, I, I understand what you're asking. Go sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. Take up your cross and come follow me. Because I will tell you, that cross right there will change your life. Amen. It will change your life to where you will become so unrecognizable to the world. Amen. And you should be. Because if you're blending in with the world, that's not what God said. He said, I've set you apart. You are a peculiar people. You are a set, a, a set aside of people. You're not to blend in, but you are to, to set, be set apart. You're not to look like the world. You're not to talk like the world. You're not to act like the world. Jesus knew the heart of the rich young ruler. He was doing all the right things. He said, I've observed all the commandments since I was a youth. But his heart was towards his possessions, not God. The, the truth of the matter is, you cannot take all your possessions with you when you leave this world. You can't take the money that you have. You can't take your relationships. You cannot take your family with you. Just because I, I, we've said this time and time again, as much as I love my children, they are not saved by association. They've got to come to the cross for themselves. Yes. They've got to know God for themselves. Yes. They've got to make up their mind for themselves that I will devote my life to the Lord Jesus Christ yes. until yes. I die or he comes back for me. The truth is, we are all rich in some form. We may not think because of material things, money, that we're not in the, the rich category. But I'll ask you, how many of us have a roof over our head? How many of us have a vehicle to drive from point A to point B? How many of us have food on our table? How many of us would admit that we should have been dead years ago? If it had not been for the Lord Jesus Christ, if it had not been for his hand of protection, many of us should have been dead ten times over, a hundred times over. But God saw fit to spare us and say, I'm not done with him yet. I'm not done with her yet. We are all rich, and not one of us is worthy of heaven. Amen. Not one of us is even worthy of standing outside the gates of heaven. But the grace of God prevails. The love of God prevails. The disciples were saying, if it was easy... If it's, if it's that difficult, because Jesus made the reference, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. I've always heard it say, and even in, in my concordance, it says that the eye of a needle is this small gate in the, the wall, and a camel would just be packed until it could not be packed anymore. And for him to go through that, he would have to get down on his knees, unpack everything. Do you hear me this morning? Yes. He would have to get down on his knees yes. and unpack everything, leaving everything behind to get through that hole. Yes. We have to get down on our knees, mm -hmm. take everything off of us, and say, God, here I am. 
I, here I am in my raw form. I leave off everything. I take all the sin off of my life. I, I, I leave it all behind. If, I, if it means I can make it into heaven. Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Does it mean that rich people cannot enter the kingdom of God? No. It means you cannot buy your, you can buy many things, but salvation is not one of them. You doesn't matter how much money you have, it will not earn you a seat into heaven. You can't buy your way in. You can't live good enough to make your way in. You have to come to the realization, I am a sinner saved by grace. There's nothing good that I can do on my best day. It is as filthy rags up to the heavens. And I know that I need God today more than I did yesterday. The disciples were astonished and it said, then who can be saved? Jesus said, don't worry about it. Because with man, this looks impossible. See, little did they know that this cross that he was about to be hung on was going to make it possible. The thing that, that looked to be impossible. When the world says there's nothing better than to live it up on a weekend, shoot up drugs, get so drunk that you are so disoriented, be so addicted to certain things. Be, you can be the best person in the world and you're working 24-7 for what? I'll ask you this morning, how is your soul? How is your soul? Is it prospering as you are prospering? Or is everything else prospering while your soul dies and goes to hell? Say that again. Is every, okay, I will. If everything else is prospering while your soul is dying and going to hell, you've got it backwards. <laughs> because when you decide... God, I am going to live to the very best of my ability for you. Because the Bible says, seek ye first, 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 not second, not third, not last. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. It will be added. It will be added. In fact, it will overtake you. Amen. Some of us are so weary running after the riches of life. Yeah. And I've, I, I've learned long ago, if you're chasing after the cross, those things will chase you down. Right. It will overtake you. Right. You won't have to, to chase after those things. Because I, when I'm chasing after my Lord and Savior... He's saying, I'm drawing you in. And when I'm drawing you in, I'm drawing in everything that you need. It's going to overtake you. It's going to run you down and take you over. Yes. Jesus said, with man, this is impossible. I said before, we all deserve, if we were true and, and realistic and honest with ourselves, all of us should have a front row seat in hell. But Jesus said with man it is impossible. But not with God. For with God all things are possible. Jesus was setting up the disciples for what was to come. He said I'm going to this cross. And you're not going to understand why I'm going to this cross. But you will. When I go to this cross, you will see that I will be buried in a tomb, but I'm not going to be there very long. I'm only going to be there for a short while. Because, see, death cannot hold me. Death cannot keep me down. And if death can't keep me down, he's not going to keep you down. Because one of these days, and it's coming very, very soon, the Bible says every knee, 
Every knee. Every knee. Those that mock God. Those that say there is no God. Oh, they're going to know. Every knee will bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He said, with man it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Do you mean to tell me that my life has been so messed up and that I've made wrong choices? Yeah, I'm talking to you too. With man, it seems impossible. But with God, all things are possible. To the very worst person in the world, God died for him too. For the very one that says, I can't, I'm not good enough. Jesus said, you don't have to be good enough. I was good enough for you. My blood covers you. My grace encompasses you. My mercy does that. He was on the mercy seat for you. How is your heart this morning? You hear, you hear all of these different things, and I'm just going to say this one time. Your heart may be bitter this morning. Your heart may be bitter this morning, especially if you were an Alabama fan. <laughs> I, I'm just so going to say one time. Bless their little hearts. Bless their little hearts. Go dogs. There you go. There you go. Um. Sorry. <laughs> the, yeah. The, there's. The, it, this. This is a. Um, if you will, a dog nation. So if if you're anything but Georgia fans, I'm sorry. The altar's right here. God wants us to prosper. He wants us in all these things. He wants us to know our priorities. If our priorities are anything different than what that Bible says, Here it is. We need to get it right. Because we're not promised another day. <laughs> well, I used to think, Lord, I, I, I'm young. I live forever. I still think I'm young. You're as young as you feel. It's just a number. I'd rather be on this side of the ground than underneath. That's right. And as long as I'm on this side of the ground, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. His praise shall continually, yes. continually be in my mouth. Yes. Do you know that if you're breathing, you should give thanks to God for that? Yes. There are people that are even uh, somewhat alive that are on life support that cannot breathe for themselves. But somehow, some way, <laughs> God said, I'm going to let you live today. Yes. God said, I'm going to make it to where there, there's, there's life. There's new life within you. We take all of these things for granted. And some of us think that we're owed life. Good life. We're not owed anything except the pits of hell. But Jesus said, I'll cover that too. I'll cover that too. Because God sent his son. He knew there was no other way but to have a living sacrifice. Do you know that, I've said it before, you can't see that cross without seeing Jesus. And you can't see Jesus without seeing that cross. They're one and the same. He said, sell all you have and give it to the poor. Does God want us to sell everything that we have and give it to the poor? No, he just wants to know we will. That's right. He just wants That's to know, right. yeah, all that stuff doesn't matter. That's right. God's blessed me with it, and what you do with it matters. If you're hoarding it up, my husband says that I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Come on. 
It's all in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> it's what you intend to do with that those things. See, nothing happens by circumstance. Nothing happens by chance. God just doesn't bless you for you to go and hide it. God blesses you. In fact, I heard it say it like this, and I thought, man, that just that's deep. God blesses us with certain things so that we can have more time with him. There's been people that says, pray that I get a new home. Pray that I get a new home. Yeah, we pray, and they got it. Ain't seen them since. See, God knows who he can trust. And who he can't trust. This rich young ruler had everything. He had it right. He had it. It looked right. He, did. he kept the commandments. He did not uh, steal. He did not kill. He did all of these things. But his heart was just all jacked up. And Jesus knew that. Do you know that when you, before you even come to Jesus, he already knows your heart. He knows when you're saying the right things. But he also knows when you mean it from your heart. Because see, it's when, when you truly come to God, it is a heart conversion. You won't want to do the things that you used to do. The, the things that enticed you of the world will not entice you any longer. In fact, the things that should entice you, God, what can I do to serve you today? You saw fit for me to live another day. You've given me 24 hours. What can I do in these 24 hours? Are you going to live it like the world? Are you going to say, God, I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to see. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to go and give to the less fortunate. I'm going to help my brother and sister out. That's what he's wanting. God is a jealous God. If he's not first, I'm not quoting movie, movie um, titles, but if he's not first, he's last. If he's not first in your life, he's last. He might as well be last because he doesn't play second place. He doesn't do third place. If he's not first, that's why I was so excited. When we heard about this baptism, <laughs> because when Kylan came in, I thought she looks familiar. <laughs> I know her from someplace. And she came up to me and she said, You're my family. <laughs> She's so shy. I said, How am I your family? I, I want to know because you look familiar. And I thought, Man, I see it. How do I know this girl? She said, You're my cousin. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, she said, Matt's my daddy. I said, oh, that's what I see. Because I see, after talking with her, I thought, oh, yeah, days gone by. That is little Matt coming right through that. Yeah, I, I get it now. I get it. Even a child will be led to the Lord. Even a child. And if a child can be led. Yeah, come on now. If a child can be led. Yes. If a child can be led to the Lord. Yes. What are we waiting on? <laughs> we should be the ones leading our children. Yes. And instead, we've got children who are begging to come to church. And the parents. The grandparents, whoever the guardians are, they're saying, I'm too tired. Shame on you. How 
How's your heart this morning? Because I'm going to tell you, myself included, there's nothing that I can say or do that would ever be worthy enough to enter the gates of heaven. But you add Jesus Christ to the mix. You add that cross to the mix. Where the enemy tries to wear us down and tries to tell us that you're nothing. You won't amount to anything. You are a disappointment. You mm -hmm. are a failure. You might as well continue drinking. You might as well continue shooting up. You might as well continue in all of these different traps that Satan has laid out for you. Jesus said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, I got you covered. I got you covered. Just come to me as you are. You just got to come as that camel, as the eye of the needle, willing to bear it all. Get down on your knees and, and crawl your way in. My aunt will like this. My daddy always said it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Amen. I would rather go to my grave knowing and believing there was one that died for me. Yes. And it, it wasn't that he just died. He rose again. And one day, he's coming back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I would rather go to my grave knowing and believing that than to go to my grave not believing and stand before my maker saying, please, I just need another chance and hear him say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Everybody bowed and every eye closed. 